Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're happy to announce part two of style for the canvas in Zim Oct. That's Zim 8. So we've done one bubbling already, and in that bubbling, we realized there were some extra things that we could do to make it even more exciting. So we've added those extra things, and now I want to take you through some examples of that now. Woo! Spinny, spinny, spinny! Okay, let's reduce that down and come in and take a look at the code. So we're in Zim 8. We're in a uh, fit mode here. And, or are we? Let's see, frame scaling. We're in a fit mode. We could probably be on outside mode. Uh, here are the updates. They're all updated in, in the update.html and in the docs as well. So basically works the same way where you've got general and then you can target by type and then you can target by group and then right on the object. So your cascading styles. There are transformation styles. So X, Y, rotation, all that kind of stuff and bounds. Um, but what we've added is uh, the values can be Zim V values. So for instance, color, if you put color and then square brackets, red, green, blue, it will pick one of those colors. Zim Zik picks one of those colors for you each time an object is made. If you want something to happen in a, a series, then you can use series and then a, um, an array. And then the first object that's made will be 100, and X, the next one will be 200, the next one will be 300, the next one after that will be back to 100. So you've got to watch that a little bit. It's a repeating series. And then there's also a range. So this would provide a range in between that. And you can specify functions as well as Zim V values. So that is pretty cool. Um, we've also added more functions. So we've got add to, center, center, reg, transform, drag, gesture, outline, move, animate, and wiggle. And they can have the Zim uh, Duo technique, the configuration objects as values. So you can turn them on just by saying, hey, drag true, and that will be a default drag. Or you can say drag and then specify any of the parameters you would normally specify in a configuration object for the drag, including a bounding box if you want to throw it, etc. Um, we've done that for animate and wiggle as well. And animate and wiggle, uh, sometimes you want to wiggle, say, both the X and the Y. Well, that's two wiggle calls. So just put those in an array. And then you can have the configuration object for the wiggle in the X and the configuration object for the wiggle in the Y. So we'll see some of this as we go along here. We've added some conveniences, add. Uh, currently, we don't have an add function. We're, we're thinking about it. Maybe we'll add an add method. Problem with add is we're, we're coming from a world of add child, where you say container.addchild in the child. So instead of calling it add, when we move to um, the chainable flip of that, where we take the object and add to the container, we called it add to. If we used add, it was a little bit more nebulous where we're going, okay, are we trying to add something to it? Are we trying to add it to something? Um, but when it comes to styles, you uh, recognize add just means, hey, put that on the stage. So we've given you that convenience one. Move is here as well. It is MOV in, in reality. It's MOV for the chainable short methods. But we thought for the styles, we will give you a break and it can either be MOV or move. And then you can move like that. Uh, if you're only moving in the X, so this is cool. This gives you relative movement. Uh, that's really important. We had X and Y set up, but we didn't have relative movement in the styles. And so now that's what move gives you. If you just want to move it relatively in the X, you can just say move uh, 20, and that would move 20 in the X, uh, as we've said over here. But if you want the Y, then it would be move. If you only want the Y, move, and then Y some value. I guess that'll do. Uh, CSS has top, right, left, bottom. That's uh, kind of cool too. Don't know if we move to supply that. I mean, it wouldn't be very hard for us to also supply that way of doing it. And uh, then there's also a style false, which will turn all of the styles off for that. So you can apply that here, or you can still apply it right on the component itself to exclude all, all styles, as it says here. So that hasn't changed. Groups haven't changed. Okay, let's um dig in 
and see what we've got going on here. What I'd like to do first is uh, you can see that we've been playing around here with style and heck it looks a lot like CSS obviously. Um, just a reminder again we've had these configuration objects and or object literals long before CSS was around and we were applying styles to things like this as well. Um, so let's uh, not loop and make 10 of those things. Let's just make a new rectangle. So where we've gotten to, as you'll see in the adjustments of these examples, even since the last time we did a bubbling, <clears throat> is that we're now to a point where we're just putting the object there and all of the styles, even adding, adding the styles or centering the styles, all that kind of stuff, or centering, sorry, the objects or adding the objects are up in in the styles. Now you don't have to do it that way. I'm not even sure I will do it this way, uh, but it certainly provides you with the option to do it both ways. So what we wanted to do is go through our examples and completely remove anything from here. So we're just, hey, new dial, new, new this, new that, new that, new that. It's just like a, a list of new things we want. And then we, we check to see if we could style everything we wanted from up above. And indeed we can. All right, so there's a new rectangle, and if we save this up and try it here, uh, instead of all these rectangles, then you're going to get one. And let's just comment out we're animating it and we're wiggling it. So we'll comment out the animation and the wiggle there and see what that looks like now. Huh. A little bit easier to start with. <laughs> one rectangle. <laughs> And so let's play around with the styles. Oh, first of all, did you notice as well, in the earlier bubbling, we had only styled the component. And that's when we realized, okay, let's see, this, this is all working pretty well. We got the components in there. Let's now style the shapes and the containers. Anything can be styled. Any display object except for the stage, I think. And maybe even one day we'll add the stage. It's only got a few things to style, but uh, I don't know if we can do that because the frame makes a stage. Yeah, maybe we can. So anything else is. Now that does lead to a bit of, um, could lead to some strangeness. For instance, if you're making things and you've styled all things to ha be green and all of a sudden the thing you're making is green, you're scratching your head going, oh, right. So at that point, you may need to remove um, that from the styles. Uh, we had to do that right throughout Zim when we were making things like sliders and buttons and dials and all those kinds of things used rectangles and, and all of a sudden we were like, okay, uh, right. It wasn't really a rectangle. Oh yeah, there was a rectangle problem. So we just made sure that on all of the rectangles we were using, we uh, um, said style colon false on them. And that way they're not going to be um, changed by your styles as you add styles. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, you might want to style uh, a button inside of a slider. Um, so we've there's a way to provide a, a custom button, and that's how you would handle that now. Uh, we just are worried that if we style buttons and all of a sudden our sliders, and that would be every slider, like there's a slider, for instance, in the color picker, all of a sudden the slider in the color picker would look like your button. <laughs> so it's just like, okay. So we've gone through, and that was quite an undertaking, I suppose, a whole day undertaking, of going in and making sure that the uh, components uh, work properly still. So there's bound to be some hiccups somewhere. Who We haven't tested everything, everything. You might be uh, one day doing a particle emitter and you put something in and it doesn't act in, in the, quite the proper way anymore. Just let us know and we'll try and tidy up anything. But we have done an example with all the components to check all of those and so far so good. Okay, so where else do we get here? Sorry about all that blah blah blah. We're center regging true, so you can center true, but I don't know if you know what that's going to happen. Let's just spin it. So where'd that animate go? We've tried a few different ones here. Here's an animate. So we're going to animate the rotation in this amount of time, loop true, and set the easing to linear. I don't know if you've done much CSS animation, but this is awfully easier to read, or not awfully, <laughs> use another word, it is wonderfully easy to read. Why don't we do that? Uh, it's just wonderfully easy to read. It's also very powerful, um, just, just as powerful for the most part, as far as I know. We probably have some things that CSS doesn't have. CSS might have a few things we don't have, but uh, in general, uh, it's certainly easier to read this stuff. Okay, so we're going to animate that uh, rectangle now 
and this is what it looks like. Should we slow that down a bit? 500 and refresh. So you see what's happening. That rectangle's not center regged now. So that's because we just centered it. So if we want the registration to be centered, we can center reg. And now we get uh, something a little bit more expected there. Um, we've sent the border color to black and a border width to five. Now that would be on everything that has a border width because look where we are. We're just in the general styles. Uh, the color, I don't know if you know, noticed, but blue, green, pink, brown, orange. What we're seeing is a pink one. We refresh it's a blue one, a blue one, an orange one, a blue one, a green one, etc. So they're just randomly being pulled from, from there as, as it's being made. There's other things in here that we can play with. There's uh, doing some animation. We did some wiggle on it. And when we did a wiggle on it, we realized, oh, you know, if we only had one wiggle, so here's what one wiggle looks like. Still animating. Let me just turn the animation off for a sec. So here's what uh, a wiggle looks like. That's great. Quite often, though, we might want to wiggle a couple things. We might want to wiggle the scale as well as the motion, or uh, certainly could wiggle it so it goes around. And if we had a style situation like, put the wiggle like this, wiggle, we can't do another wiggle. It would just override the last one. So the answer to that would be to put the wiggles in an array. And same with animate. These are two things that we might want to apply several animations to the same object. So here is a, an array now with one wiggle object and another wiggle object in the Y. So one wiggle in the X and one wiggle in the Y. And we come back to our code. And now it's wiggling both in the X and in the Y. We <laughs> Wee wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. OK, and if you animate now, so here's an animate. We're animating the properties of rotation in this amount of time. I think we have to go faster. We're looping it, and we're setting these. So anything that we could do with animation, we can do right in there. And we refresh here. And now we have a spinning rectangle. And if we come down to the bottom, that's one rectangle. If I add another rectangle, like so, then I would have two spinning rectangles and just wiggling about. Okay, random colors. Sometimes they might be the same there. That's the same. Other times they're whatever. And now instead of doing that, if we loop nine times, loop nine times, call the function and just make, oh, that's a new circle one. Uh, we could add circles. That's for another example. We'll see in just a second. Here's a loop 10 times and we're making a new rectangle each time we loop and we refresh. Uh, by the way, all of this stuff that's up here that we just did, we could do it right in the loop on the rectangle. We could say new rectangle dot wiggle dot wiggle dot uh, animate right here in this loop. And the it just looked like dot animate and in round brackets we would have this stuff. It would say dot animate and in round brackets we or dot wiggle and in round brackets we'd have that. Dot wiggle we'd have that. So what we've done is we've um, put it up in styles so that you don't have to do loops necessarily or put that stuff in the loops. I, you know, it's just another way of doing it. It's, it's probably just as fast and easy doing it this way too. But there are some advantages uh, to styles. They can be part of groups so you can target certain ones. Uh, you kind of got everything right up here in the one place. You know, these advantages that styles have had in the past. So isn't that neat? And let's, uh, there, there's the loop and we save that and view here. And there goes a bunch of them. If we loop a hundred, we've got a hundred of them going. Okay, so let's comment this one out and we'll bring in this uh, looping of the circle, which had these styles down below. And we'll take a look at what we were working on with those ones, and then we'll pop on over into another example. So now we've got type circle. We're adding it. Oh, uh, that can now just be add. We've given you the shortcut there for add. 
Uh, that's if you want it on the stage. Now we're still kind of puzzling what to do with that one. It may be that we provide an ad that always adds to the stage, or maybe we'll just provide an ad that completely replaces ad two. I'm not sure. We have a remove from, and it was pretty silly. We realized after that a remove from, you never have to specify what you want to remove from. You can just say remove from and not from what, from what container, because you're always just removing from its, its parent. So remove would work for that. So then we'd have add and remove. All right. But anyway, at the moment, as a style, we've provided this convenience style add true. What we're doing is we're doing a series in the X. So 100, 200, 300, we're looping nine times. And then a series in the Y, three 100s in the Y, three 200s in the Y, three 300s in the Y. Oh, Okay, it's not the maybe the most most efficient way of doing something, but you can see what it gives us is a tile. And again, we've got random colors going. You take off the random color thing and just put color there. You've got colors. So uh, comment this one out and just say color colon uh, green like so with a comma. Oops. <laughs> Uh, color colon green. Did we do something wrong with it? Oh, pff, right. Okay, just get rid of this color. Color colon green, and there we go. They're all green. So note how the circles color overwrote the general color, uh, which is true. Okay, so I'll bring these back though. Should just undone, undone, undid. She's come undone. All right, so that's how the series works. And then we're getting a random color from the Zim V value of a, an array. Now, one place, we'll go see it. If, if you have to specify an array, we might run into problems. For instance, in, in tabs, you have to specify an array of tab items. And obviously, we don't want us randomly picking from that array of tab, tab items, which is what happens when you specify an array. So there, there's a way to deal with that. We'll go see it. Border color, border width. All right. I think that's this example uh, looked at. There's some more things in here that we were doing. What's that? Okay. Well, let's, let's undo this style here. It's kind of funny. Down, down here, we've got a second one where we were dealing with buttons dials and tabs, and watch what happens when we run that. Oh, <laughs> ta-da! Uh, they get placed there. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the dorky laugh. <laughs> cough, cough. Oh, what was I doing? I was going to bring the wiggle back on. <clears throat> oh, no, that's gone like a spittle down the wrong tube. <coughs> Which probably leads to hiccups. So. Uh, that's what happens. Oh, we're, we're also rotating those circles. You can't even see them spin, so that looks kind of silly. We won't loop the circle. Well, it all looks silly, of course. We'll loop the rectangles again. And this is what happens if you all of a sudden throw in button dials and sliders and stuff. Is Look at that. They all just spin in there <laughs> as well because uh, they've, everything's been styled to do that. So you might want to... Um, only style the rectangles to do this, for instance. So you see all this stuff that has the wiggle here. You would drop in and you would say um, type <clears throat> colon, and then it gets two brackets and rectangle colon like that. And then all of this stuff that was out loose, animate, cut it like that. Oh, we don't need two types either. Uh, comma. So now what that is saying is a type goes all the way to here. A type of rectangle will have the wiggle and the animate. And the type of circle will have well, whatever this was doing. And then all those things won't spin around. So now these things are just added because we had a center reg in general. They're added, but they're not spinning around. Okay, so anyway, what I really wanted to do was just comment out all of this earlier stuff. And come on down and just check out what this style was giving us. To there, there, arg. 
How you doing? Welcome to what's bubbling a zim. Blah, 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 blah. All right, and um, see where we're at here. There we go. So these are components that are styled, and look at those components. New button, new dial. This one's just showing an indicator to show that we can override an earlier indicator if we want. So up in the uh, dial right here, oh, somewhere was an indicator. There's the indicator color of white. So if we take a look at this, there's the one with the indicator color of white. And now we're overriding that specifically on this button to have a purple indicator. In this case, we've got two dials. So uh, how do we deal with the two dials? We go into dial, we're centering it, centering the dials. And then we're saying move in this series, move one minus 80 and move the other 80. We're saying ignore a width, and that can either be ignore like that or ignore like that. We're leaving it up to you as to whether you want to ignore with quotes. Because is there a width up here, a width of 220? If we didn't ignore the width, then the dials would also get a width of 220, which uh, we didn't want <laughs> because that's too wide. So we're saying in general, and now we don't have to say in general, whatever we we're, we're probably trying to put the width on the button really. So we may as well just pick this width up and put it on the button and then really only the button's that, that width. Uh, but it, that's up to you and how you want to work there. There's an example of moving the tabs like that, where we're moving it in the Y after we center it. It's quite common, I, I find anyway, quite common that we center and then move from center. It's just a bit easier to work that way. Did I put that back in and save? I didn't save. <clears throat> okay, so that, that's an example that's up on CodeShare as well. And if you, uh, or not CodeShare, CodePen. So if you haven't checked out CodePen, please do. And please follow Zim, uh, Zim Learn or whatever we are on CodePen. That would be nice. And now let's then quickly move over to the last uh, the last example we gave in the last bubbling. So this this now is here. And uh, let's open that up. I think it's called style.html. So here it is. Remember this one uh, from the last one? You can see that it's all working again. One thing that we did to change here, though, is... Uh, well, let me show you. So to change is, this is the style version. These are now our components. So there's nothing in the components or on the components. And here as well, almost nothing. We're showing the progress bar. It show automatically centers it. And then we just wanted to move it. It's very unlikely we'd want to move the progress bar over to the left here. We're just giving an example. So, you know, whatever. So we've put the move right on it. Uh, the label, this is a specific label that says certain words, so why not just put it here? If you really wanted to control it up above, you would add this label to a group uh, of one, in a sense. Or if it's the only label on here, then that would be fine too. And same with the, the label size. Here's panes, waiters, keyboards. Keyboards makes use of this, so... Uh, you could define this before the styles, but you know, if you want this to use the styles, you'd have to find it after the style. Then you could add another style for the keyboard and then specify it or whatever, just specify it here. So that's that. And then these are extra things. So isn't that cool? We've adjusted this whole example so that it all works in styles. And here's what those styles look like. Some general styles. Some of these, like size, are, that's only good for uh, font size. So it might have been fine to put it on a label. Oh, it might have been also part of the radio button size, I think, as well, yeah. Was these go across sliders and dials, those things. But they're still out in general. If we wanted to, we could make something for the slider and something for the dial or add it to a group. But um, we're probably okay. I think sliders and dials use steps, but not much else does. Or at least, and then if, if you happen to add something that uses steps and you don't want these steps, you can override them or ignore them. So that's how that goes. And then here are the various types, the labels we're doing that. 
the keyboard, we're doing that. And we've already gone through most of this in the last example. Some of the additions, though, let's, uh, well, some of the additions, we've added the add, the X and the Y in here. So that's quite common to just add and set the X and Y, or to center and move it, which we saw in the last one as well. Uh, true, boop, background color, so all that looks good. Here is the slider. Uh, we've added a second slider just to show you the series. And that is what gives us this slider and this slider. And then anything exciting in there. Now it all looks like it's much the same, which is nice. It's good to be much the same. Progress bar, bar type rectangle. Okay, that's good. And now there's a couple things here. Let's try them out. Uh, one is a custom slider button. So we're creating a button. We've told it to style false, so ignore any other button styles. Just use the ones that we've provided here. And then we're saying style type slider, please set the button to this button that we've just made. And we refresh, and now those buttons are triangles like that. Nice, huh? Now, if we wanted to, we could have made this button, because it's ignoring the styles, we could have made this button up top and just put the button, shall we see that? So we just take it from here, put it up above our style so we can reference it. There's the butt. Come down to where our slider is. People, 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 slider. And say button is that butt. And then we don't do that. And let's check it out. And we're back to the same thing. Okay, so another thing is these, this uh, backing style. Let's check that out. Uh, backing, so we've made a tile of a bunch of circles. We've set the type to pattern. We've set the style backing to back and the style roll backing to back. And so what that means is everything with a, a backing or a roll backing, all of these things that have a backing or a roll backing will get that style. And we refresh here. And there they are, tabs with the style, pad with the style, buttons with the style. These buttons don't get it because we ignore styles on those when we created it. And I guess that's um, that's it. The paint. Oh. Okay, so that's uh, kind of neat, isn't it? Well, it's been a long bubbling, I think, but it is uh, terribly exciting. Back in the docs as well. Uh, mjs.com in the docs the style s t y l e has been updated nicely for you so you can see that um, with all of the information that you need there two nice examples you can copy those examples and put them right in as well the information on the transformation styles, the random range and series function values, uh, the functional styles, so things like add to, center, that stuff. Convenient styles that have been added so that um, you can use these words as well, and how to exclude things, and how to do groups. So that's really neat. Groups, exclusion, convenience, functional, uh, the random things, or the ZIMV values, transform, and the fact that you can target both the type, we already talked about group and on the object, but the type and general, that makes eight special features of style in Zim Oct, Zim 8. And that is what's bubbling at Zim. So uh, please enjoy. I hope it works out well. Tell others, start using it, and contact us with anything that you want to talk about at zimjs.com slash slack. And we'll uh, be happy to talk to you. So uh, look forward to meeting you. Ciao.